<laughs> Hello, and welcome to ATX SAS. Hi. This is our X meetup. Five, I think we decided it was five. Five, five, okay. This is our five. Um, First of all, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Capital Factor for this lovely space, Iron Yard for giving us money to be in the year. And if your company would like to sponsor us, we'd really like to talk to them because that's why we don't have pizza. Why we don't have pizza? We don't have pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have Just in case you're wondering. Uh, today we have the lovely Mr. Jason Weaver from Sputnik Creative. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Yeah. To thank our sponsors. Thank you for coming out. This is awesome. Um, so I'm going to talk about responsive type systems today, uh, and I'm going to kind of go through a project we just wrapped up. It's fucking creative. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to kind of drill into everybody at Sputty Creative is the idea that we're not going to do waterfall anymore. We're not going to have a design that's a fully fledged website with Photoshop um, <clears throat> and just you know create. Photoshop mockups for every single page, right? We want to create a system in the browser, a type system first, and be able to use that system to create uh, modules that they can reuse and build pages with. Uh, I think it's really important that we, um, if you're in the industry and you're, you're building for clients, I think it's really important in the industry right now, especially with responsive design, to get into that method of creating websites. <clears throat> So we have this client right now, we just wrapped up, they're called ForeFlight, they're a um, iOS app um, creator and they, they, uh, they sort of have the monopoly on um, pilots that, you know, they need apps to, usually pilots come in and they have these giant books full of like maps and stuff that they need, but they created a, an, an app that actually has all that for them, it's really easy and they can use an iPad to get to all their stuff. and. Uh, create routes and whatever the hell pilots do. <coughs> so um, for their new website, so this is their current website. So yeah, this is their current website. It's probably built about uh, I don't know six or seven years ago. It looks pretty pretty ancient. Um, and they needed to, and they needed a. Uh, a new system for their new website, and they wanted to look kind of modern, right? So we developed this system for them, and this is what we came up with. So um, let me just kind of show you what's going on here. So we created these modules that they can use throughout their site. Uh, this is their current maps page that kind of details out what the maps feature is on their app. Um, and you can see how the type is beautifully laid out. And what's really interesting about this project is that we didn't have um, we didn't have styles created just for specific sections and on one specific page, right? So we had a system in place. So I'm going to show you how we did that. First, we created a general styles document for them, and we laid out some type. We uh, made class names for them. Um, we used Greek alphabet names for the class names. So uh, H1 gets alpha. Um, then you have beta down here. And you have gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta. What so, ipsum are you using? Bacon ipsum. Bacon? It's just a bacon ipsum? Yeah. <laughs> Created by a guy from Austin. Apparently. Um, yeah, so, so we created this, this general styles document first. Um, what we had was we had one Photoshop document that one of our designers made, and we showed it to the client. We said, well, this, is the, this is the direction we think we're going to go with this site. And uh, the stakeholders were very apprehensive, I would say, and said, well, we can't really sign off on um, what the pages are going to look like unless we see the entire page fully mocked up, right? And so we said, no, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going we're gonna to get you to sign off on different elements of the page. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have a header and global elements section that you can sign off on. That's this right here. And we're going to have a footer section that you're going to sign off on. And we're going to have a footer section you can sign off on. And then we're going to have these general styles that you can sign off on. And we're going to use that to build your site. And they still were sort of like, no, we need to see mock-ups. And no, you're not going to see mock-ups, sorry. Um, 
So what we did, we started creating the system for them. And so this is how we get it. So if you look at this, this is uh, in code pen, we have some headings here, all the way down to six. Uh, we have an unordered list and some paragraph text. So with just that markup, let's let's take a look what that uh, what that looks like. Move some of this stuff. <clears throat> so we'll just get the reset styles right. <clears throat> And okay, so this is what we have for reset styles. This is the basic styles that resets everything. So what we went ahead and did was we created these class names. First we set the body to one rem, and one rem equals 16 pixels roughly if you have 100% font size set on the body or the HTML element. So we have 16 pixels. We have a margin set of 50 just for showing this out and nicely formatted here. Uh, line height is set to 1.2. Uh, you can set this to 1.4 if you want, get a little space in there, 1.6. You can easily add or subtract space in between elements by adjusting the line height. So for all the H, all the headings, we have just a font weight set to 900, a margin bottom, and then we have this calc function that is sort of newish in CSS. Uh, what it does is takes something and you can actually have an operator and and do some sort of math function with it. So can y'all see that? It looks totally <coughs> there. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, so we have this, this calc function, and this calc function takes a pixel unit, which is, um, if you remember the rem, one rem equals 16, um, it takes that and calculates a rem unit for you. So you divide, uh, you take a pixel unit divided by 16 equals a rem unit. And that's what we're doing with this calc function here. And so it's a margin bottom, we're just setting all of the headings to a margin of 10 rem, or 10 divided by 16, and that comes out to a rem value. Cool, so for H1, we're gonna have, uh, it, we want it to be 50 pixels, so we, we do a calculation of 50 rem divided by 16, uh, and that gets us our 50 pixels for H2. Do the same thing with 44. So I work with the designer to get every single heading and this class, um, the system of classes to do, to build the type system. So we have 50, 44, 38, 32, 26, and on down to 20, right? So that, that gets us our classes and our headings set. And I'm just gonna go into this a little real quick. Wait, I'll save, after this one. All right, so now what happens is you have this, these, these headings set, and let me go ahead and put it on the paragraph and the list. So we want to do 18 pixels for those down there. Uh, so now we have this, uh, these set this way, right? So like whenever you re do a responsive design thing, like it just stays the same. But what's really cool about this system is if you set them in rims, so the, which are relative units, and they use the root, you can change the root on media queries and you can change the type size and it'll kind of shift with each media query, which is really great. So what we're gonna do, since this is set to 78, we're gonna, we're gonna set it to 88%, uh, and that bumps it up a little bit. And then whenever we go through another medium media query that's 800 pixels, we'll set it to 100%. Save that. Go back to this view so you can see it. So, what's happening here 
is the HTML element, it has a font size, to, and, it's, and it's in percentages. So whenever you have the default, a small screen size, it's 78%. And whenever you have uh, anything over 600 pixels, it's 88%. And anything over 800 pixels, is 100%. So this is what it does. It's not going to do it in this layout. It's going to do it in this layout. See that? So everything moves, even the margins move because of that 100% and 88% and 78%. So you don't have to touch it. You just set the system and that's it. Um, this keeps the CSS super light for topography if you can set this. Ideally, it would just be set like that. And you can use class names to do other things like, say, if you know one of our designers, Edgar, is like, yeah, but one of these H3s, man, like they need to be, you know, super tiny, you know, and I, I need to have like, I need to have something like this, like, let's say, so like heading three, he wants, but he wants, you know, super tiny in this one module. So all you do is put a class name, Zeta. Save that, and there, it's super tiny. Cool. So that works really well, right? So you can still have that system working in place, and that keeps the CSS really light. Is this working for you guys? Yeah. yeah. You like that? Okay. Cool. Um, do you see how light that CSS is? You don't have to worry about going into every single media query and every single breakpoint and declaring a size. Um, you can set it right now as soon as the design phase starts and get your clients on board with that. And you can have really, really light CSS that you can control just with these percentages. So say like, um, sometimes we have, let me back up right here a little bit. Sometimes we have, take this out of the way. We'll go through our QA process, right? And with a client and we have these, um, live mockups in code. And they're like, man, you know, like, when I'm on an iPad, and you go down that one spot, it just, on an iPad, it just it looks too small to me. You know, like, that's, I don't really want it that small. It needs to be bigger, it seems like. So you just add another media, media query, and you hit that target area. So you do 700, and maybe you like want to bump it up to 110% or something like that, you know? <clears throat> you can easily adjust this type. So now, like whenever you're on an iPad, like boom, like it's, it's a little bigger, right? And then it goes down to smaller. Okay. So this is a SAS meetup. There's like zero SAS in here. Um, so let's let's talk about let's talk about SAS. So I use SAS to organize uh, all of my type on my site. Um, I don't want to get too crazy. I just want to, I just want to organize it. Um, <clears throat> and a great way of organizing your SAS and for typography is with maps and the each directive. So do you remember the font sizes we had set for here? So each one of these had a, like, this was 50, 44, 38, 32. So instead of having those on each individual, um, uh, for each individual declaration, um, or rule, uh, we have just a map here. So this is a, a SAS map. It's defined as uh, a variable font sizes. Um, and we have a relationship, a key value pair, alpha 50, beta 44, and all down the list. And I built a little mix in here. And what this does is this takes a font size and uh, you can declare a value in that, that's what that F is, and that will print out a font size in pixels. That's for IE8, if you want to fall back. So rem units aren't, uh, IE8 and below doesn't understand rem units. It just doesn't understand it. So what you can do is you can take, you can take um, pixel units and declare that first, and then declare the relative units after. And so it won't understand the rem units, but it'll understand the pixel units. So you can hit IE if you need to. 
for this particular client project, we have to hit it, IE8, so that's what I have to do. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, like, where else, where else uh, would you hit hiccups with not, not understanding right yet, and how long they've been around? Uh, say again? Like, where else, uh, what other browsers would have problems with that? For REM? For REM? Um, well, let's look at uh, can I use. Only IE8. I think it's IE8, right? That's what yeah. I was looking at before. IE9 is about all this. Yeah, <clears throat> IE9. Um, but it's relatively good use in, uh, support across everything else besides. Um, <clears throat> you know, IE8 and below. Yeah, so like I said, like for this particular client project, I had to have IE8, so I went ahead and put that in the, calc in the function, uh, in the mix in, so it would print out the pixel value as well. <clears throat> and that works pretty well. I mean, I, I hate to have it in there, it really bugs me, but for this particular project, it, it you know, I had to have it, so. Um, <clears throat> So we just, we're just declaring some font sizes here with font primary and font secondary. Um, we declare a, a base size, which is 16 pixels. Remember, like one rim is 16 pixels. <clears throat> so wait, I need some gear. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so we have the same exact thing here. You know, I see the media queries for the HTML elements and we're, we're changing the font size. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and we're doing the same calc for the margin bottom on all of the headings. So that's all that's all regular CSS and um, except for the, the font family stuff. And then um, so here we have the each directive. So I wanna basically what I want to do on this map is I want to I want to print out this. I want to print out exactly what I had in CSS. I want this exact thing to print out, right? So all of this gets printed out by using a SAS map and an each directive. So here's the SAS map, and here's the each directive. So what's happening here is you iterate over the, the SAS map, <coughs> and so remember those key value pairs. Um, Greek name is the uh, key, and font size is the value, and you want to do it on the SAS map font sizes. So we're printing out font sizes here by declaring that this little, this little guy here is printing out the Greek name for each, and it's gonna ha set it as a class, and we're gonna include this font size, and then print out the font size for that particular um, iteration. So remember the font size here, there's a value that goes in here, and it prints it out here. So let's look at that as a compiled preview. <coughs> Look pretty close? Looks pretty close. So right here we're just printing out the, um, so here's the, the regular CSS, and here's the SAS map compiled and the each directive compiled. So the only thing we're missing here is the, um, the headings elements in there as well. So how do we get those in there? So what we do is we do the each directive again. Uh, we have the green font size, key value, in font sizes, we print it out. So this time we're gonna do a placeholder. We're gonna do a placeholder and have the Greek name as a placeholder. And then we're gonna do a comma. And then we're going to do the class name as well. So it prints out a placeholder and a class name. Does everybody know what placeholders are? In SAS? My question on the first, in the beginning, was have you thought about using the Greek names as placeholders? So, like, and then I answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so, so this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to print this out. And so, if you look at the pop compiler view, so it prints out like this. It looks pretty close, All right? All right. Let's take it off the compiler view, and we're going to use placeholders. Okay, so here's our, we're gonna extend the placeholders here. So now we're, we're, we're back to where we were, right? So this is really cool. 
because my friend Edgar, that's the designer, that doesn't know how to code, is like, man, that thing needs to be, you know, this thing needs to be smaller, man. So we can do that. You can also just add things to the map. Right. It spits it out. Right. Yeah, yeah. You can also do that for sure. You can get really crazy with maps for sure. Um, for this talk, I kind of wanted to get, you know, be pretty simple about it, I guess. Um, yeah. Cool. So. So that's that, and what happened? Cool. Um, yeah, so there are times when you have uh, the font sizes printed out and they're just um, they're just single pixel values that you have and, and they all uh, are sort of like the same as they go down in the, in the browser. The viewport is scrunched out, right? But I've had cases where um, a designer has said, you know, I really want to change that pixel size to be completely different because the layout changes so much and I want it to be way bigger than it is, right? At a, at a like a, a medium sized viewport or something. So what you can do is you can, uh, instead of having one set of values, you can have three or four sets of values if you'd like. You can also nest these. I didn't nest these because it is really hard to get at um, really deep in maps to, to iterate over them. You have to use like a plugin. <laughs> and it isn't like, it's, not, it's super hard to, to iterate over maps that are like really deep and nested. So, um, so, you, so all I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I have three sets of uh, value pairs and um, each for small, medium, and large screens. And I'm printing them out in media queries. You guys see that? So here's our base, that's small size. And then we can go in here and we can change them to be whatever we want. Now let's look at the compiled view of that. That is ugly. That is so much, oh, that's so terrible. So what I do is I try to come up with, um, instead of doing this route, what I try to do is I try to come up with like an extra key value pair and use that I just because you can keep you know adding to that key value pair map and I just I just use that to, to maybe have a style that's like super large for some reason on a large screen or whatever um, so don't don't get into I would say in my experience don't get into like you know oh I'm gonna just create a bunch of those and then because it just prints out a bunch of CSS that you don't really need and it's, it just keeps it really, really, it just makes it really complex, in my opinion. I like to keep things simple. Um, I like things to work really well, and I like to keep my CSS really light. <clears throat> and I hope you do too. So, just just looking at some of the, the design that we have for Four Flight, um, we have the airports up here at the top, and you know this may need to be a little, a little bigger. It's just a. It's just set at 18 pixels because it's a paragraph, right? So what we can do here is, if we're just looking at the, the code, we can actually put a class that says uh, like gamma or something, and that'll that'll make it a lot bigger. Or we can make it a uh, zeta. That'll make it a little bigger, right? Or let's work with the designer a little bit more. Maybe oh no, let me need an epsilon. So while we're doing this, and that looks pretty good, right? So like, oh, we'll, we'll use that. <clears throat> and these like, man, those are H3s, but they're so huge. Um, so what we do is we add classes, you know, like, like Zeta classes. And the designer's like, oh yeah, that's, that's way better, way better like that. So the idea of whenever you use, uh, use this system <coughs> is that like you can just use classes that override the the heading, the heading uh, declarations, um, and it works out really well. And you don't have to write a bunch of crazy CSS and overwrite shit. And, uh, I thought it 
was going to get more interaction with the crowd. <laughs> yeah, it's very quiet. Um, have you have you thought about doing um, kind of like more modular groups, like kind of naming your modules and um, extending the the group names inside that rather than just adding it all over to your HTML? Like like if this is like the Whatever module like part of this is like that H three extends data instead of doing that. No, I hate that. I don't know why. I hate but this. Yeah, yeah. So um, now we have to fight. the reason no no the reason why I don't like it is because I want to set my styles and then just be done with it, and then I can go in and just build pages in the markup. So and that's um, way faster than having to like flip over to the like and then like where is that CSS? I don't even know like. You know what I mean? I don't know. It, I, I, I see your way. I see. I know what you're saying, and I, and I know that people don't like to litter their HTML with class names. Well, I, I just, love it. I just, think it's, <laughs> I just think it's interesting because I, I like hearing people's um, rationales, I guess, for the ways like yeah. that they choose to do stuff. Because mm -hmm. um, for something like this, like if you're working on I'm going to say smaller, air quotes, smaller client sites. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, you're building these pages out, and they're not going to change a whole ton. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you add some pages, maybe you change some content, but overall, they don't change a whole lot. Um, versus like some of the stuff that we're working on, we're doing. You know, there's four or five A/B tests on a page. Mm -hmm. You know, different things going on at different times. Yeah. Um, and so having stuff in the HTML, multiple people touching the HTML. Uh, or HTML you can't touch and can't edit, it actually becomes significantly more unwieldy to have that than it is to be able to edit it kind of like all in the SAS. Um, hmm. But I think it's really interesting, like when people do and don't think about that, they're like, oh, I don't know, it's just the way that I do it, versus like having some rationale around like, yeah, it's faster to build a page like that mm -hmm. than to flip back and forth to your SAS. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. That's my rationale, and I, I get when people do, I'm like, well, I don't know. I just feel like you're writing the same amount or, le or less by writing to, to HTML. Yeah, it just. I think it just kind of depends. Like most of my experience has been with like big product, like enterprise things, mm -hmm. and so like the whole system within what you have, when when you work is totally different. Yeah, um, yeah totally. and there's so many different considerations that mm -hmm. it becomes really unwieldy. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've worked on some enterprisey type type stuff and. You're right. Like it's, it's like they don't want you to touch the HTML, right? Or like they are, are like we just make a stop for that. Like, right. Well, I mean, I think in our case in particular, sorry, I'm like totally derailing this, but like in our case in particular, we just have there's so much, um, there's so much HTML, so many partials, so many templates, so many different pages, um, that you like okay let's say we're gonna we want to change like so this is like one page or like i mean how many pages mm -hmm. was this site in total like like 40. okay so you have a handful <laughs> of places you want to change stuff um mm -hmm. and then so for us we have you know i don't know probably a couple hundred of our pages like all the different store pages mm -hmm. some of it's being built in different templates things on a b tests like internal stuff external mm -hmm. stuff um and so what happens is there's so many people working on all these different things. We're like, oh, we want all of these, you know, coupon headers to be smaller. And it's in 35 different partials that five teams are touching. Mm -hmm. There's really no way to control whether or not that's actually going to work or like whether they're all going to go in and change their respective things. Right, right, right. Um, but it's much easier to say like, okay, well, this is like the horizontal coupon module, if your HTML matches this, if you're using these kind of like sem name, semantic class names, mm -hmm. all in the SAS, like we can go in and actually kind of control what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the the goal there is not speed of building pages, it's long-term sustainability. So it's kind of like a different, just different setup. Right, right. I was just curious with the, like I just like knowing people's rationale. Yeah. Like, no judgment. I'm just curious. Well, I mean, I think also if there's good documentation on how to how to build the pages yeah. and how everything works, right. you like you should be able to build a design system and it works really well right. and you don't have to touch the CSS. Exactly. You know what I mean? You just you that's, just use yes, it as it is. Um, and I found I find that um, a lot of the companies that we work for. Um, like Forflight, they have developers on their teams, but they don't want to touch SAS. They just don't want to touch right. it. Right. So it's easier for them, it's easy for me to train them and say, look, you just add a class <laughs> here. Add these classes, yeah. 
and and I even have you know you know style guides and, and show them how to add the classes or whatever. And it's super easy for their teams to, to grasp that. <clears throat> um, and they, they don't have to worry about compiling shit, you know, and all that stuff. And they just don't want to even touch it. They don't even want to touch it usually. But it does depend on the client. Like you know, um, if we had a different client, then I would probably you know, and I I treat every client differently. I would I would say too. But as far as like, you know, uh, getting a design system in place, writing clean, just simple CSS, and having it work really well with class names, it's worked really well for us, and our, our clients love it, so. Um, yeah. Uh, has anybody played with the VW and VH units for font sizes? Cause that shit is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all I did here was okay. So I added a class to the H one element called Stretch, right? And uh, the font size thirteen VWs. I just like I don't even know where thirteen came from. Came from. I just started. Okay, it was ten dude. Like no, nah, maybe like twelve or eleven. Like no, nah, thirteen's good, right? Save. What does that mean? I have no idea, but it works really well. <laughs> um, so that's another thing y'all can look at, and you can do fallbacks for that, of course. You know, um, pixel fallbacks for lesser browsers. You can, yeah, you can do that. Use that in no. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, you can, I think, use. No, you can't use. SVG. Okay, can, you, can you use SVG and IA? Like inline? No, not in line. you need not in line? A there's a SVG for everybody JavaScript polyfill that actually works really, really well. Mm. Um, there's a couple little tricks, but um, you do have to have the right, JavaScript right. polyfill. I did, I did a, uh, a version of this in just uh, SVG. Um, sorry, I'm going to find it really quick. Sorry, guys. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so like, what I did was I, I have a fallback um, and then a SVG element right here, and then I just took the text from the fallback scalable title and plopped it in with, with JavaScript, and that works exactly the same way, which is pretty cool. So Fari hates this now for no reason. I don't know why. It used to work really well, and then Safari updated, and it doesn't like it. So there's probably a workaround for that. But anyway, those are those are some other cool options to get like responsive type to work out. Well, yeah. Was it VB? Viewport width and a viewport height. It's like scaled with a viewport. Basically is what it means. Yeah. And there's like V min. V -min. And V max. And V max too. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some cool like full background stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I've been I've been playing with this stuff a lot lately and it's it's been really cool. I like it. Um, I want to open up the floor for more questions. Yeah, we don't have a tech talk today. We usually do a longer one and then like a short five or ten minute tech talk. We don't have that today, so um, we can go till till eight with questions. If anybody has anything they want to demo or talk about or share. So you got the client to agree. Just based on that, like, move forward. Yeah. Well, no, he wasn't, he, he was very apprehensive the entire time until he saw how fast we were building pages. Um, so once he saw a full page build out, then he was like, oh, cool, yeah, whatever. And then he would he would even say, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that we had signed off on the type system, but can we change this particular heading to a different size? Um, and so we did that. Um, it was really nice to be able to, you know, like handhold, you know, hold hands with the client and be like, hey, like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this with you. Like, you're going to be every, you know, there every step of the way and we're going to show you what we're doing. And the client, um, uh, our point man for them was, you know, basically a designer um, and knew a little bit of CSS. So it was really a good experience for us. And one of the first experiences we had were just everything went so smooth during this process and this new sort of process for them. Because traditionally with my company, 
you know, we're a small company, but we were very waterfall. And once we started getting more clients that had larger websites, it's just, it's impossible. We would be spending two years on their site trying to, you know, design every page. This doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> so, I mean, I worked for Happy Cog and we, we did that process, that waterfall process for, for big sites. And it would take two or three years to launch a site. It's just ridiculous. It's so, and this took us like four months for this site. And they were like extremely happy. So. Was this the first time you used the system? <laughs> uh, it was the, f no, it was not the first. We, we had one prior um, that we used it for, and, uh, but it wasn't a huge site. And then uh, when this site, when this site came along, this client came along right after that. And this is basically the way we're gonna go from now on. We do have a couple of small projects right now that are just like, they have like four pages or something and we get those kind of mocked up. And, but we still do like the system like this. Um, and I work with the designer as he's designing the full mockups. Like look, set your type this way so that we have consistent type. That's the main, the main thing. It's like everything is consistent. Because I had worked in too many projects before where like you have type all over the place and like there was, you know, 12, 14 different type sizes. It's like, why? Why is it like that? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so many sites that I worked on were so many styles that I wrote, overwrote other styles and had different styles on one page and to another. It's just like, that is the dumbest thing ever. So I, I'm, I'm tired of working like that. I've worked like that for eight years and it's, um, this this way is so much better. And working with a designer, closely with this, with a designer is so much better. <clears throat> What are you calling it? System? What's that? What are you calling it? If it's not powerful. Um, I don't want to call it agile. <laughs> um, it's just for me. It's just designing websites, really. You know what I mean? Like it's the natural medium of the web. We're designing for the web, and we're just basically designing the browser, really. Because we do we do use Photoshop, and the you know our designers do mock-up modules. They don't mock-up full pages, per se. They'll mock-up like little modules and be like, hey, this is what we want this particular module to look like, and I'll build them. That's what we did with Core Flight. So <clears throat> I showed you the general styles, but we have, um, so I did this one, two, three, four up modules thing. We have like a one module here. It's like a one up with like one giant image, a button, and then like there's a Flexbox module, which, um, if we don't have any more questions, I'd like to I'd talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so we have this Flexbox module, um, then here's a two up wide Flexbox, another Flexbox. So, so like I made all these different modules for the site that they can use. And it just, it's, it's, it's the extensibility of these modules by using all of the, this system, it's just, I mean, exponentially you can just keep building them, keep building them with just the set of styles that I created, right? You don't have to go back and rewrite a bunch of styles just to create one module. Like it's just, it works really well. So that answers your question too. It's the idea that you can just build pages um, and you have so many options and you just use class names to do that. And you don't have to just write a bunch of CSS all the time. Yeah, I, apparently I'm a, a developer that doesn't like to write CSS. <laughs> I'm curious if this is like kind of unrelated, but if you've had any experience using like, like Hamel or Slim? Like I use Jade. Oh, right. Yeah. So I use Jade all the time. Yeah. Uh, pull up a, so when I, when I build templates, I usually, if we're doing the CMS, I usually use Craft. Um, if I'm going directly into craft, I won't use Jade, but if I'm just building templates, I'll use, um, I'll use Jade. Uh, so like if I have, so four flights, open that up. Yeah, so like, I'll stop complaining. So yeah, so here are my views. So I just do Jade templates instead of uh, running HTML. Because apparently I hate writing HTML too. 
Um, yeah, so I used Jade to compile everything down into templates. I follow up to this. And you said like the designers from companies that you work with are kind of like they're very fuzzy about SAS. Do they feel yeah. the same way about Jade? Uh, they don't ever touch Jade because we just uh, deliver the the no, templates to them. Yeah. We deliver the whole thing, but they can just grab the templates and do whatever they want to with them, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, usually they're like, what is this Jade? You know, so. It's a rock. Yeah. It's a precious mineral. Um, anyway, so if we have enough time, I'd like to talk about uh, how I use Flexbox to get text centered in a module. You guys want to hear about that? Anything else? You want to do flex flex stuff? Yeah. You have 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's talk about this. So if you look at this module in, uh, <clears throat> this is actually a Flexbox module. The, the reason why I'm using this Flexbox, the only reason why I'm using this Flexbox is to center the text, center the text with, <laughs> Uh, the image. So the image is larger, right? But I want the text to sit exactly center within that at all times. Uh, so to do that, I use Flexbox. And if you can see this, this text is centered in, in the middle. We have basically two floated elements. This is, this is all I'm using Flexbox for is to, is to center all the content in the middle. So, oh, so you're not using it to close the image Nope, nope. Because I wanted to work on, it had to work on IE8, right? And, and, and IE8, it would just be at the top. Not so. Yeah, yeah. So in IE8, it falls back to just being at the top. Um, and I'm just using it uh, on this module. Here's, I'm just using it at 710, over 710 pixels, right? <clears throat> and then everything else is just normal. It like, just goes flat, just stacks. Right? So um, everything, all those little modules in between, like the inner modules, so inside here, this is an inner module and this is an inner module, they're, they're actually display block and flip left and the width is 50% and I have some padding. Um, so it works with or without. If a browser doesn't understand Flexbox, it just works. So I8 looks like this, right? And what's really cool about Flexbox is you can reverse the row, like you can reverse the items. Um, so flex direction row reverse. So I have like a class name called row reverse. And so on the bottom one here, I have row reverse. So like you'll see it. This is how it normally lays out. So whenever it goes down to a smaller size, I want the image on top on both of these. But whenever it's on a larger size, I want these to be reversed. So what I do is I put the display flex, align item center, and then row reverse on one of them, and that's what it does. And it works really well. So I built that into one of their modules. So I have a flex, I have a couple of flexbox modules on for flight that they can use. Um, and it works really well. That's a good fallback too. Yeah. Like it's just I mean, stacked in IE that size. I, I mean, there's so many different times where I was trying to use JavaScript to make everything centered on those, and this has worked so well. It's amazing. So I was like super stoked, like high fiving my kids. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that, like, CSS makes us stress out about. Yeah. Like, that should not be such a big picture. Oh, and so many websites I've built where, where the designer had like this text centered, and I was like, nope. why are you doing the text centered? You're stupid. <laughs> That's the dumbest design ever. You know? And I would like bitch at it for a while. And then, uh, and then this, and I, I was like, I'll just use Flexbox, and I just came to one day. It's awesome, um, and it worked really well. So that's all I have. Thanks for listening to me. Um, I'm going. Tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, that would be tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, it's the weeks. I'm really good at them. So um, what happens when you're unemployed? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, also, next month on Thursday, April 23rd, we have Kevin Langdon coming up uh, doing up and running with digital regression testing. Should be a good one. Which is could be awesome. Yeah, he gave a, a really, really good talk uh, workshop, I mean, at SASConf last year, talking about visual regression testing. Um, I He was up against mine, so I didn't get to go see it, but I like read over his uh, workshop material and stuff, and it looked really, really awesome. So. Um, if that's something that you've been kind of looking at, like a low phantom CSS, or you have kind of questions and curious about it, um, I'm expecting a pretty big crowd for that one. It's like yeah. a really hot topic, so we'll definitely have food next time. <laughs> Unlike today. Yeah. Actually, we should have a sponsor next week, so yes, yes, we'll yes we will. Next month. Next month. Yeah. Right. See. Weeks. Weeks. Yeah. Under. Uh, and per usual, if you have a topic you'd like to talk about, or if you would like to sponsor, please contact us at atxs at gmail.com, or tweet at us, or smoke signals, or pigeon carrier. Those may or may not make it, but you can try. Right. Uh, but yeah, that includes five or ten minute lightning talks. Doesn't have to be a full length, eight minute deal if you just have a quick little thing you want to show off. I think that's it. Amongst yourselves. I have um, also, I'm sorry, I have another thing I want to talk about. Sorry. I, I'm doing a thing called Workshop, and it's a bunch of my friends that wanted to get together and teach people how to do intro classes, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, iPhone app design, design sprints, uh, craft CMS. Um, check it out at workshop.co. There's no O on the first O. So it's just workshop.co. Um, uh, classes are fifty. Our classes are one hundred dollars. They're three hours, and um, if you guys want to do fifty percent off and get it for fifty dollars, then let me know. And I'll give you a coupon code. Nice. When are those starting? Uh, we're doing our first one which is uh, Rick Messer. He's doing iPhone app design. That's Saturday. Nice. Saturday if you send us some info, we can treat that for you. Awesome. Cool. Cool. I'll actually switch it to guess. <laughs> <laughs>